In my effort to host more pollinators like butterflies on the farm, I just planted a flame acanthus. The flame acanthus, if I'm saying it right, should get about three feet tall, three feet wide, and be a host to butterflies. And over by the playhouse, I planted this passion vine, which hopefully will crawl up the side of the playhouse and become a home and a host for more butterflies. Being in a place where there's lots of butterflies and bees, pollinators, dragonflies, beautiful insects, even hummingbirds, the birds that go around from flower to flower, it just makes it more interesting, just more nature, so that you can enjoy all the subtleties of having things flutter around you. I've noticed a lot lately on my farm, more butterflies. Maybe I'm just becoming more aware. Perhaps they were always there. Now that I'm becoming more aware of them, I see them and I wanna know what they are and what they eat so that I can provide a space for them on the farm. And my orchard up here on the berms is a really good place to plant. Having a diverse collection of plants will increase the diversity of life pollinators and all sorts of things that come along with it and that just makes for a healthier farm healthier soil and just something more attractive can you open it for him one of my favorite places to hang out is in the garden and yesterday when I was in the garden I noticed a monarch flying around and enjoying the nectar of my moringa flowers check these out well there's a butterfly right now it's not a monarch and there's another one and there's another one and there's a bumblebee all kinds of little butterflies and bees kind of bee is that? I'm thinking the the moringa is a good thing to try to continue to propagate and grow on the farm because it's super nutritious for me, my family, for people, not for me, and also appears to be a really great resource for lots of pollinators. I mean, I'm seeing I'm seeing little tiny butterflies and some bigger butterflies. There's one up there. It looks like a swallowtail and bees this just looks like a really great plant to have on the farm i'm excited to be growing different things like this i never really knew much about moringa until last year and somebody shared with me how nutritious they were and i thought well that's something i'd like to grow for us but then i see all these animals loving it as well it produces lots of little flowers can you see that butterfly it produces all these little flowers for the butterflies and lots of bees that's just a lot of fun to see all of them and I never would have seen all of those in one place without the moringa so it's cool to grow that another thing that I really enjoy growing uh, to eat and also to share with the pollinators is my basil right now I'm growing a lot of Thai basil and the Thai basil has a lot of beautiful flowers. Oh look, there's a butterfly on it right now. And the bees love Thai basil. Can you see that bee? The bees have just totally... Oh look, there's all kinds of butterflies. So yes, butterflies and bees love the Thai basil and they're beautiful, these purple flowers. And then they produce lots of seed and they will reseed themselves. So I probably won't ever have to worry about planting another Thai basil plant in my life. This is just a few of them in pots here. But I have some, a little cluster of Thai basil. Oh my goodness. You guys, I wish I could really share with you how beautiful it is to see all of these pollinators enjoying these plants. All the bees. I'm not sure what these little guys are, but those little white butterflies, those are pretty. 
my little field my little field of Thai basil has just been loads of fun to watch develop and all of the insects on the farm enjoy this pollinators that do all the hard work of getting things to grow they take pollen from one flower to another which allows them to produce fruit and in the case of my honeybees it allows them to take it back to the hive and make honey being that it is autumn instead of spring in the springtime there's flowers everywhere uh, in the autumn it's it's not quite as prolific but I think that's maybe why it's easier to see the butterflies and the bees on specific plants because there's only a few that are actually producing pollen at the moment if you didn't catch the farm day video go back and check that out because one of the vendors that showed up to share her passion and her knowledge was Drake White of the Nectar Bar that's her business and the Nectar Bar is a business that is uh, all about pollinators butterflies educational and designing gardens and all those things she has a lot of knowledge and a lot of passion for that and I'm excited about the possibility of her coming out here to share that knowledge here on the farm so that I can record it and create videos for you I'm also excited about that because she is going to help me design areas on the farm that will be like pollinator gardens something that the the butterflies the hummingbirds the bees all of those pollinator type animals and insects will be able to enjoy those places and they will add beauty and function to my farm Jack Jack's enjoying the pumpkins that we brought home from the pumpkin patch Maybe he's camera shy right now. November 1st is a great time to get to the local pumpkin patch and pick up some often free pumpkins that you can either eat for yourself, collect the seeds, add to your nutrition, or feed them to your animals. Hey Luke, can you help me take pumpkins to the other chickens? Let's do it. Hey. Yeah, can you take that one? Miss Sophie? Yeah. Let's break it out here. Break it out here and then we'll take it into the silkies. There you go. Alright, let's take some into the silkies. Yep, put it in there. I'm out actually recording the next episode but the butterfly pollinator episode has not been edited yet so on the Moringa there's two monarchs there's one Or maybe that's maybe that's a queen. That might be a queen instead of a monarch. But either way, it's beautiful. 